Hey folks, I found myself with a little bit of free time tonight. I wanted to go over for a second uh, Fusion's excellent new feature, which is this uh, wireless initial probing. Uh, it works with, I, I guess, several machines. I know it works just flawlessly with the Haas machines. So I've seen a few people using this, and I knew it would be useful to me. Um, but at work, I program mostly in Inventor, and I haven't updated yet. It has probing as well. Um, but but I had a job come up where I really wanted to use it, and uh, I was really well pleased at, at how just simple and easy it was. A few things that I had to kind of work around on my particular part, and I'm curious to see uh, what knowledge is out there. I'm sure there's a faster workaround, or it may be a situation where I'm just uh, not seeing an option. Uh, anyway, let's, let's, let's look at that. Um, so what I wanted to do was reference this Z surface on the ring here, and then I also wanted to... Uh, pick up this ID bore because I have to cut this groove and it needs to remain concentric. And so I'm putting these in a three jaw chuck so uh, they can slip uh, vertically and they can also maybe, you know, not pick up the same in X and Y each time. So what I chose to do here is uh, go into setup. When you're starting a probing cycle, I actually had to look for them. I thought it would be under uh, 2D, but it's not under the machining at, at all. It's where it is is in your setup, um, uh, WCS probe, and uh, what this lets you do is open up a probing cycle here, and it will automatically choose the type of probing cycle because there's only so many, right? You don't have to start by defining it. Uh, you start by clicking a surface, and this let me pick up a certain surface. Now, if you notice, I'm kind of cheating here because I'm picking up a surface that doesn't actually exist. By default, when you uh, select geometry here, I've, I've picked a face here, and I had to make that face. By default, you know, if I click this height, it wants to probe in the center. And for the life of me, I can't see where I can, I can control all of the heights and the way it behaves uh, in Z, but I can't send it to a specific location in X or Y to try and uh, reference the surface that's actually there. And I should clarify, at this point, um, the other work was lathe work, so the diameters in this boss, they've already been established. Uh, what I'm trying to, this hole's already gone, so there's no material here to touch. Uh, so what I need to do is really come over here and grab this in order that I can put this hole pattern in, as well as screw. So by selecting this face, I didn't get what I wanted, so I have to deselect that. Let me show you what I did to fix that situation, and we'll see if somebody has a maybe a smarter idea here. Um, I actually created a new body, so if I hide this, and uh, the way that I did that, I just created a sketch, uh, and I projected that loop, and then I drew a circle and constrained it tangent. That way I had a perfectly centered uh, circle that I could then extrude, and I had a specific surface that I could grab, and I knew that it would stay on that radius. In fact, it would actually carry over um, as we update maybe to change the dimensions of the part and stuff. It would keep that probe surface where it needs to be. So we back out of here, and um, so that one works. And then uh, to probe the bore, this was awesome. Um, it, you sh it, it couldn't be easier. You just click the bore. Now, in my case, I actually gave it some uh, additional uh, uh, Z. And I was looking at this, and I really didn't need to do this. What I wanted to do is just guarantee that that probe tip, the center line, was below uh, this, this edge here. Um, because probing a, a sharp edge... Uh, it's not going to be as accurate because, you know, if, say part of it's deburred and the other part maybe isn't, uh, you could you could pick up some error there. But I realized something halfway through. Let me show you this simulation. Um, we're, I mean, we're grabbing this Z surface. So now the machine, and it's G54, it, it knows where the Z surface is. So when it comes down here, I can tell it just to come down. Uh, in our case with our probe, it's in, in the standard uh, Haas probe. It's 3 millimeters. It fits a 6 millimeter ball on the end there. So that lets me go ahead and uh, change this back. And this is something else that's just super useful if you're using Autodesk CAM uh, in either one of the three varieties, um, resetting things, uh, heights. So I've edited this height. And I can reset to default. I like to click reset to built-in default. So the difference between those two is if I want to make this a default, say if it was giving me a number that wasn't half of that uh, ball or half of the tooltip that I have, 
I could I could assign that, and I could also assign it uh, as a rule to be half of the cutter or half of the probe diameter every time if I'm working with three or four different probes. We're not that fancy, so the built-in default is simple and easy. But th these are great things. I mean, it's, it's worth playing around with, uh, especially because if you have a certain setting that you always use for a certain thing, but then at some one point you need to drop back to the built-in default, it, it's right there waiting for you. So it, it, that's really cool to me. Um, and so I'll click OK because the thing was going red. It was seeing that the uh, the tip was going below the surface. I think, and it didn't it didn't like that. So you probe that surface. Yeah, and we're still getting indication like it's a gouge. I'm not really sure where that's coming from, but when I posted this out to the machine, it was totally happy. Everything worked uh, exactly the way that it should have. The yeah, bottom height, retract height, everything seems to be normal. So maybe that's just what it does. So if you had a case where uh, you had a reference to diameter, um, say if this was shifting a lot, maybe uh, you could hit that surface. Yeah, you'd want to give it some additional Z just to make sure you're well within that bore before you come out and over and uh, touch off the surface. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, probing in a nutshell. There's really not a lot to explain. If you're familiar, especially with probing at the control, you'll realize how simple all of this is. And uh, it's it's super helpful. I mean, you know, if I didn't have some geometry here, I could probe off of a gauge pin. I don't have a, a stylus tip that will drop into this hole. So I can actually slip a gauge pin in here and I can draw that right in fusion, tell it to probe that surface, and then you know of course just hide that out of the way when I'm doing my other machining and, and that could be part of my setup. And it's just really cool stuff like that. And uh or say these parts had to go back in for some second off or I forgot something and I wanted to pick up uh clocking if our machine was uh, able to record clocking. That's another thing that would be uh possible. Um, I really don't know how you write that to the um, back to the cam software, but you could certainly grab, you know, and figure out what that angle was and then adjust your program accordingly. But anyway, that's it.